Hey, hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Hey, AJ, thank you for moderating my stream again. I hope you are awake enough to help me through this night of Swiss signaling on the S Bahn Luzern to Sursi DLC of Rivet Games. Um, I actually want to play up to three services on this mm. little DLC because it is the only DLC where you can actually see system N signals of the Swiss railway mm. in action. Mm. I wanted to start with a service that runs from um, mm. Luzern to Sursi starting at I think 11.14 so to have the opportunity mm. to look a bit at the station and the train without rushing too heavily. Mm. I want to spawn on foot at Luzern. 11.10 should be okay. And let's make it May so that we have clear skies. Mm. Maybe we want not so clear mm. skies, light clouds. Mm. This should be good. So, did I already turn on the service? No, this is the service, I guess. The 11.14 S-Bahn service, Luzern to Sursi. We will see the steel see quite a lot here, I guess, because it is the only one that sports ETCS installations. We have one type of train in the steel see this flirt R R A B E 523 train designed and run by Rivet and uh, built in Switzerland as far as I know it's a Stadler train I think yeah and I think this is the train that we are actually supposed to take let's see if we can find no this is not the one otherwise we should see a departure information here and I think we don't depart on track 8 so we will probably have to go over through this nicely sculptured station you can see over there even the park behind the station is sculptured and I think our train starts usually here tra track 4 Five and so on. Let's see if that is our train. Three, four, and five. Maybe six. I've seen departing. Let's see if we can take over. Yes, that is the one that I wanted. So we can prepare our train a bit before we actually sit down. We can adjust the chair height or height height. In this case, someone told me that I mustn't say flight but freight. So now I'm saying everything like hate, although it is height. To set up our train, there is not so much to do actually. If it is already running, hello, CD radar. Welcome to my stream. I was trying to start setting up my train. We have a master key that we need to unlock so that we can use it. The doors we can open already even without unlocking the master key. Typically the pantograph is already up when we take over a running service. If not, you can use this lever here to raise it. The displays are already running as well. There is not that much that we have to do. Obviously, we need to set the reverser to forward that we can run. The doors are... I close them again. That was the one door that is open where I got on the train, actually. So I closed it here again because passengers won't board if you open the doors before the scheduled time. This is the machine where you can set the uh, PIS, the passenger information system. It is dark at the moment. 
I have made the experience that there is no point in setting that before we actually have reached the departure or the start time for the service. If we want to have some lights in the coach, we can use that one. The headlights are, as you can see, already on. There are only buttons where you can turn them off or where you can switch them to marker lights, so typically you don't need to do anything here. Uh, there's a parking brake, there is a parking mode brake if you want to switch cabs. What else is there? Those buttons are typically not really used. This is the sand button and you can well dim the dials a bit. But we are already almost at the start of our service, so we can open the doors now. Since we are running to Sursee, I think it's the 202 code to enter so that we get the S-Bahn Sursee on our PIS, the codes you can find in the manual that Rivet provided for that. I can close my doors and switch the security systems, the safety systems to the mode STM. I won't explain too much about safety systems. Thank you very much to the radar for this comment that you like my channel. I really appreciate that. I guess there are not so many people who are actually enjoying my videos, but it is a few but select viewership. And I appreciate that you are taking the effort of looking into this stuff with me. Thank you very much. For me, there's so much more to the game if you actually try to, to look into the signaling and safety system stuff and try to understand how it works and what is happening there outside the train, inside the train. Switching off the hut and stuff and just focus on what you can see in the track and on the dials and gouges. What I was trying to say is I, I won't explain so much about safety system in this stream here. Um, we will have, I think, three more streams covering Integra Signum over ECTS level STM. And two streams about ETCS, maybe level 0 and level 1, using level 0 to explain the whole concept of ETCS. Well, you can see leaving the station, we still get System L signals, what is the older of the two, switch Swiss signaling systems. We had to stay below the 40 until we cleared the first signal of the whole train. This train has this funny um, limiter, this thingy here, where you can set a maximum speed that the train should not go above. Oh yeah, I have been preparing a lot of stuff for the ETCS streams. AJ can tell you I have been working really hard and tried to get this into a format where you can put it on on, on a video because it is a lot of stuff. <laughs> it is a lot of stuff and um, we don't have a lot of implementation in the game. I really appreciate it that, that Rivet ventured to implement some of it on this little route. Definitely need more of that. So, as we are closing in on M and Brücke, we will get the first um, system N signals 
those letters for the system N and the system L, by the way, this is quite ingenious because it means light signals for the system L as opposed to mechanical signals. Here you can see the first system N signal and now we are getting a yellow or orange in Switzerland system N signal that tells us we have to expect an incoming stop signal. So this is what we are doing. We are slowing down so that we can stop in front of the next signal. Oh yeah, that's cool. It's really funny that uh, a lot of countries are so far ahead in front of Germany and France when it comes to the installation of, of, ECT, uh, of ETCS. And here is our red signal. And this is why I choose this, chose this service here, because it is one of the few services where you get actually stopped by a red signal along the track, not only at the end. You can see those circles around the signals. Those are typical for the system N. Now it's switched to yellow, we can go on. And they denote the main signals, the home signals. If they have the circle, you can know this is a main signal. If they have a square around the lenses, then you know it is a distance signal in the system N. Why this uh, system N, by the way? They are using lights as well, obviously but the N stands for the numerals because for the speed signaling, we will see that in the presentation that I prepared, um, they are using numerals for the speed signaling instead of the color codes that we have in the system L. As we have seen that on the second but last stream. Yeah, and the system L with light signals as opposed to system M mechanical signals, which are the semaphore signals in Switzerland. Exit signal is at orange too. But we have a lot of time to stop here. <laughs> and still one point short. But well, anyway. Uh, this, this train here provided by Rivet allows us to switch three types of safety systems. The STM mode that we're using today is ETCS STM mode that more or less allows us to use the legacy systems that we have on our national networks here in Switzerland, the Integra Sikrum. This is why we have the Integra here and this is why sometimes this button here lights up or this button here lights up and we have to acknowledge it when we are passing a orange signal but we will look at this into the next in, in the next stream you can also use level 0 and level 1 etcs and we will look into those two in two other streams today we will just run it will be running under stm using the integra signum and have a look at the signals you could already see that our exit signal, what is the main signal obviously, switched to green for us, or it is nice so we can leave as soon as our departure time has come. The other signals are at red. So those main signals in the system N can only show green, orange or red. No combination thereof. And the distance signal in this signaling system are even 
more simple. Maybe I can go back to the place where we can have them. This is a system L distance signal. But there was a diverging track when we came along this road where we could see it here where this bridge is diverging. There should be a distance signal of that kind here. You can see it a square around it and only two lenses because distance signals obviously cannot um, display a, ho a stop aspect, a red aspect, but only the orange warning on the green clear. Here you can see from the two asterisks that this is actually a repeater signal that is now turned off completely. <laughs> don't know if that is on purpose actually or not. Soon as we are getting to Surcy for the first time, we will have a look at the presentation, I guess, and see this in context. Well, here we were just able to have a first close look on those signals. Now we have to start again. Always make sure that you uh, increase the target speed with your limiter if you want to accelerate because otherwise it will prevent you from accelerating. On this train you cannot turn it off but you obviously can set it to 160 then it is not hindering you. But obviously then you have to pay attention to not go over the speed limit. What obviously you always have to do even when you are using this limiter because you cannot really rely on it. Especially when you're running downhill. Here you can see why it is called a system N numerals because for the speed res reductions re re speed restrict speed restrictions the system is using numerals like this is telling us with a green light and a 6 from here on 60 after that you will be clear and can go back to track speed the system was not uh, the signal was not announced typically we will get to this in in the presentation signals that denote the start of a speed restriction are announced by signals that announce the restriction but in this case it wasn't I have no idea if this is prototypical and if this can happen happens in real life but it happens here For stopping at the stations I usually use the uh, dynamic brake on the combined brake and propulsion handle to slow the, the train down almost to a standstill and then I apply the train brake fully to secure it in place for leaving the other way around, closing door, releasing and then the first notch to get the brake cylinders cleared. Yes, the mirrors are actually extendable. There is a button that you would operate with your foot and you can see that they are flapped out then. But as far as I know you would use them only if you are running as a tramway like in the Arosa linear DLC in the first part in Kur when you're running your railway as a tramway you need to have three of your mirrors
This is a funny thing because you can see actually the counter for the distance is climbing again. So we are going through an almost 90 degrees curve or 180 degrees curve. Quite heavy ascent, so we are losing a lot of momentum here until we get to the station. The station here has a, a hidden speed changing point. If you look at the, at the diagram here, you can see that some time in the future the limit will go from 90 to 110. And this happens quite weirdly in the middle of the station here. I have not managed yet to find a sign announcing this. And you cannot really see it on, on the diagram because now it looks like it is really far ahead, the speed changing point. But when we start off from this station again, you will see that then all of a sudden the speed changes. And when you're using the cap signaling that comes with the ETCS, and you can see it change in the middle of the platform. So we can have a look at this. If there is any speed changing sign, any sign that announces an increase. I definitely have never found it. Those markers with the four are obviously uh, stop markers. Blue ones are markers for what platform number it is. And somewhere here in the middle of the platform, the speed changes from 90 to 110. We can't see it yet because our train is obviously sitting in the middle of the speed changing point, but you can see it with the cap signaling for E. TCS level 1 that well in, in real life they would know that because they have a timetable or in uh, in Switzerland it is called uh, Zeittabelle Tabelle, I think Zeittabelle. and there they can see it I don't know if they have an electronic system for that like the Ebula in Germany but in, in Great Britain, on the older routes, you definitely have that. You hardly have any signs. But now just, just look at that. It still looks like it is far ahead. We're accelerating. Still far ahead. Still far ahead. Still far ahead. <laughs> And all of a sudden we are at 110. So this particular speed changing point is a bit weird. Next up at Rothenburg. There are more or less two different types of services in this DLC. The first one is the S-Bahn service, where you stop at every station. And the other one is a um, regional express service, where you only stop at like three or four. You can see that we have uh, this is TMN signals all the way, only the area around Luzern until you almost get to the first stop, past the old system L signaling 
and the rest has the modern or more modern system in. Here we can see that the limit goes up to 120. This is the sign that you would expect in the middle of the platform at the station that we just left. If they want the limit to increase to 110. But we can already do that on our limiter so that we don't get hindered by this thingy when we accelerate later. Now I was a bit late on the brakes that shook the passengers off their seats, I'm afraid. But at least I hit the 500 points. The sweet stop for the stopping is a bit behind the 2 meters. So if you stop at 2 meters sharp, you often only get 499. And you can get 500 if you are already a bit beyond the 2 meters and already the counter shows 3 meters. So if you're going for the 500 points at every stop, you want to stop a bit late behind the 2 meters mark. Now obviously we can accelerate into 120. Next station is Sempach Neuenkirch. And then it is one, two more station and then we are at Zurzsee. On the right, I think we will soon see the mastery uh, overlay. It is a, a, a big, big cheese sitting in in the field next to the tracks. Here you can al already see it. That is the mastery reward. I don't know if there is a story attached to it or if they just wanted to have the big cheese in their DLC. Now we're getting in a decline, in a descent, so we will have to be prepared for using our electric brakes to slow down the train so that it does not speed. can already see the uh, high building in front of us in the fog. We have to pass this and then there is the station. I've never seen a whistle board here in this DLC. It's totally probably that we don't whistle because the level crossings are protected and guarded by other stuff so that we don't need to whistle and are more or less in quiet zones all over the place. So we don't know if we can actually hear the the horn on the train. 
because we would not be allowed to use it just for fun. Here the stop marker just shows an age for halt, undoubtedly. Get a nice view on the the system N signals in front of us, you can see this black box underneath, this is where you would display the numerals if you announce or execute a speed reduction. The naming of the signals with letters and numbers is more or less the same system that we have in the system L, uh, system L, yeah, true. Oh, what did I do? Did I not lock my doors? Ah, I already had locked them and I opened them again. That explains at least the boarding time is short. Yeah, that is true. The boarding time is short. Yep, you can see the gates are opening just as the train is up. <laughs> out <laughs> to pass the level crossing that is obviously not what it is supposed to be at least the fog lifted in an instant now we're getting an increase in speed limit to 125 you could see that on the on the post to the left if you want <laughs> yeah this is how it should work right Yeah, they might have to look into that once more with the level crossing gates. If you're interested in the speed board signaling and the gradient signaling, I would invite you to watch my streams about the Arosa Linie. Speed signaling is in the System L stream and the gradient signaling is in the safety system for the Arosa Linie, the ZSI-90 stream. Now we're actually allowed to go to 160, what is in Switzerland, just like in Germany, the highest speed that the train that is not guided by a continuous guiding system like LZB can go. We have one more stop at Notville, what is located quite nicely next to a lake. And here I can say they improved a lot with the water animation compared to the Isle of Wight, the original Isle of Wight route. The water looks actually much more like water now. Already have to initiate the braking. What I found is that it is almost impossible to derail this train just by applying too much brakes. At least if you stick to the uh, electric brake. Even in snow and ice you can yank the lever to 100% and the thing does not derail, it just slows down.
you can totally try that use the talent 2 on SKA, SKA uh, Schnellfahrstrecke Köln for example run it on 160 in snowy conditions and uh, then yank in the brakes with more than 70% and the thing will derail at least that's happened when I played this more often maybe they fixed this or changed it, I don't know they have a lot of derail issues anyway or had them so this is the lake obviously did I close the doors? yes, doors are closed also on the Dresden Nahverkehr, the Talent 2 there is a part where you can accelerate to 160 in the Dresden Nahverkehr and then you get a signal slowing you down to 50 and uh, if you apply more than 70% brakes in snowy conditions then you are most likely to derail your train What is actually supposed to happen there and what gets simulated, I don't know whether the the wheels actually just slip off the rails because they don't have any grip or what other mechanism is simulated there, I can't tell. I think it is totally possible to derail a train in real life by applying too much brakes. Especially if, if you don't have a mechanism that properly prevents. Oh, there is already one stop more that I forgot. Oberkirch, right? If you don't have a, a, a wheel slip protection system that is so good that it can actually catch that. Another thing that can happen when you apply too much brake power on the wheels, they, they can melt or the, the bands that are on, on the wheel sets can, can break and then the train can use this, the, the fragments of the, the band to climb over the edge of the rail. I remember that there is um, a very interesting video on a extremely good YouTube channel called Der Silberling that explains a lot of railway technology in a in, in a really amazing fashion in German obviously and he has a video that explains the principles of derailing and what can happen that makes a train derail he has also a lot of great videos about brake systems and, and other technology 
especially for German trains, obviously. So, now we're closing in two speedometers. Yeah, actually there are two speedometers and they think I think they, they show the same readings on the left and on the right. The left one is the ETCS display and the right one is now we are getting a yellow signal again. The right one is the original display for this train here. And we stop in front of the red signal and can unload our passengers if there are any left. At least one passenger is left. Thank you very much, very much for riding on our train. And this is the first service. And this is the whole route that there is, and uh, you can go it into this direction or the other direction. So, I think this is the perfect situation, the perfect point where we can actually switch to our presentation. If I find it on my desktop, yeah, here it is. About the Swiss signaling system in. And you can see that I repeated. Uh, our setup that we know from the system L. These are system L signals obviously and the progression from um, green signals, clear signals, freie Fahrt signals over a warning signal, warning distant signal repeaters to the red main signal that orders us to stop. Just to repeat it Typically, the distance signals are put up in a way that the train can actually stop in front of the red signal, depending on the speed limit that it applies. You can't see a cursor each here, I'm sorry. Let me see if I can fix this. Now you should see one, right? Yeah, at least I can see you on my stream. Sometimes I have to click twice to make this happen. All right. Yeah, it's fixed. Good. Great. Well, what, I, what was I saying? I was talking about the Bremsweg. Typically, the distance signal is put up in a distance that uh, allows the train to stop in front of the next signal. We know that unlike the German system with Hauptsignal, Vorsignal, we don't necessarily need a distance signal in the Swiss system. Sometimes we actually have main signals in a row, especially if there is not so much room between them that it makes sense to put a distance signal in between and we know also that unlike in the German system the aspects for the distance signals and the main signals are not exclusive to either type but a main signal can show all the aspects that the distance signal can show the distance signal cannot display a uh, red aspect though and not a kurze Fahrt aspect this is just for recap and now we are replacing our system L signals here with system N signals. The main signal that is supposed to sto show halt, stop, looks just like this. Main signal, a circle and the red lamp for the stop. The distance signal announcing the warning would look like this. It is the square denoting it as a distance signal and it displays one orange lamp for the warning. So if it is a distance signal it still retains this numbering that we know from the system L, uh, but it looks now like this. It loses one lamp, we have only one orange lamp. And um, 
yeah, don't forget that we don't not necessarily need a distance signal in front of our main signal here. Instead of the distance signal, there can be another main signal, and the main signal would have the circle instead of the square and show exactly the same aspect, a single orange lamp for the warning. The repeaters would look like this, but there is a special sign like this. The two stars that we know that denote the repeater are now put up bigger on a special sign on top of them so that they are easier to recognize and the driver can see this is a repeater this is not a full-blown distance signal why is this important we had this in the last stream it is important because the driver knows from this signal he cannot rely on having enough uh, distance to perform a regular stop to slow down the train enough so that the braking distance is not safeguarded from those signals here because they are not full-blown distant signals. The freie Fahrt on the main signal would look like this. Again, circle for main signal and the green lamp for freie Fahrt. And on the distance signal, it looks the same. We lose the aspect of announcement of clear. It did not make an awful lot of sense in the system L. We did not really know it. We know that in the system L, sometimes the announcement of clear was replaced by the clear aspect anyway and uh, we have the same here now on a distance signal or on the next main signal in front of it we have the same aspect Freifahrt one green bulb so we are here in a sequence that we know from so many other signaling systems you can see it in the German KS system green over one orange or yellow lamp to the red. You can see it in the British system that we have in the four aspect system the double yellow in between but in the three aspect system it is just the same. So very very uh, the system that that mo more or less is so strikingly simple that more or less all the modern systems are tending to it. What happens if the braking distance cannot be safeguarded between the second but last signal and the last signal. Let's have a look at this. If the distance between the signal that is in front of the red signal is smaller than the braking distance that we need, then it obviously doesn't make a lot of sense to just put here a warning and expect the driver to stop the train in front of the red signal because obviously he can't because the distance is not enough. Then <coughs> We can either do this, we can put the warning here, but this alone obviously is not enough, but if the because if the driver starts slowing down here, he won't make it to a stop until he passes the red signal a danger. So we need this aspect here. This aspect tells us Vorwarnung, this is why it is a V, shows the orange aspect on the main signal and tells us you have to prepare to stop at the second signal not at the next but at the second <coughs> because this warning signal would obviously not be enough to safeguard the braking distance from the Fahrdienstvorschriften, the operating rules that I, I read um, this can only happen on a main signal at least this is how it is put in the rules. Another way of signaling this would be that, well, you can obviously have a distance signal in between. It doesn't necessarily need to be a main signal. It can be a distance signal in between. Then it is still the second signal after this aspect that shows the red aspect. Or if you have a verkürzte Abstand, what is not necessarily the braking, uh, less than the braking distance, but we had this on the System L with the yellow over yellow short run, kurze Fahrt. It also exists in the System N. It looks like this. You have the warning orange on the main signal and you have a flashing bar underneath the signal. And this tells you the next signal will be red and it will be a shorter distance than it usually is and this signal also orders you to not pass it with a higher speed than 40 to make sure that the train can stop until it reaches the red signal so that makes makes sense and uh, because this signal aspect 
already incorporates a reduction in speed limit, you have to announce it with an announcement signal like this. We will see that in the speed uh, signaling slide here. The orange main or distance signal with a number does not tell you the next signal will be at stop, but it tells you at the next signal you have to slow down to 40. Just like in Germany, you always have to multiply the number that is shown by 10 and then you get the allowed speed. And in this case, with the orange and the 4, it tells you at the next signal you have to be down to 40. Just what this aspect tells you, even if there is no 4 incorporated anymore. <coughs> so this is a speed announcement to 40 on a main signal. can happen on a distance signal as well, then it looks like this. Only thing that changes is the shape of the frame. If it is a circle, it is a main signal. If it is a square, it is a distance signal. But it can show totally the same aspect and has totally the same uh, meaning, the same indication. And this can also not uh, precede a red signal, a signal at halt, but a signal, um, not a signal, but the end of the track. Like a buffer block, and the buffer blocks typically have this sign, a halt signal, a stop sign on top of them, or a red lamp, or both, for day and night. In Luzern Bahnhof main station, you will see the red lights. Uh, on the way, you see those halt signals a lot. Alright, speed signaling in system N. Again, I put on the screen our sequence that we had uh, a look at in the system L stream and we saw that there were three speeds that were possible to be um, announced and uh, proclaimed in the system L, 40, 60 or 90 or anything else if you had something else in the timetable or on, on your operating rules. And um, we will just translate this into the system N now. The signal that tells you 40 from here, the yeah, signal that denotes the commencement of a reduction to 40, was in the system L, the green over orange, very similar to the green over yellow in the German HV system, for example. It gets displayed by a signal that looks like this. It is a main signal. This is because this is why it gets a circle. It is a signal that tells us from here on 40. This is why we have the 40. And it is not a mere announcement of the speed, but it is a it is a signal that proclaims the commencement of the limit to 40 here. This is, where this is why we have the green lamp. And at the same time, it tells us the next signal will at least not slower. Either it is again a 40 or most probably it will be a freie Fahrt, a green signal again. This is the meaning of this. Green plus number means here starts the limit and the next signal will be a better signal, or the same signal, or at least not worse. Most probably a clear signal. How is this uh, announced on a distance signal? Distance signal, square, and we announce it with the orange lamp and the same numeral. So this is the typical uh, progression that you have. First you get a signal with a lamp, orange, and the numeral telling you at the next signal you have to slow down to this speed that is indicated here. And if you get to this signal and here starts, then, then at any way, whatever this signal shows, the reduction to 40 starts at this point. If nothing else is supposed to happen after the signal, you will get the green lamp and the numeral telling you 40 from here, when you're through the interlockings and everything, you can go back to track speed because the next signal will be a clear signal. What happens to our signal green over green that announced uh, a reduction to 60? It looks obviously like this. The same signal 
that we had here with a different humeral. Now, the six. But what do we do if we had a situation like this where we had a signal like this one, green over green over green, telling us that here commences a reduction in speed limit to 90 and at the same time a distance signal warning us that at the next signal the speed will drop further to 60. Obviously we don't cannot fit all this into uh, one aspect here, but what do we do? We put this up. We say um, orange and 6, meaning at the next signal you have to slow down to 60. Yes. But how do we get the order that starting from this signal we have to slow down to 90? We cannot say that with this signal here. We have to use the signal in front of it. Like here, the distance signal that precedes the signal tells us, again, announcement, orange light. Next signal, you have to slow down to 90. And even if you don't see that in the signal anymore, you have to slow down to 90. So you have to remember that until you get to the next signal. And then you know what happens. <coughs> if nothing else happens but the reduction to 90, and then you can go back to track speed, you would have a green lamp and the 9. If there will be a further reduction in track speed, then you will not get a green aspect here plus the 9, but you will get the warning aspect for the next reduction and you have to keep it in your mind that you have to slow down to 90 here. So this progression would be <coughs> what is appropriate here. If you don't want to order, so let's just have a look at the speed diagram here. Let's say the train travels with 100 in the beginning, passes this signal, this is only an announcement, so nothing happens with the allowed speed, but as soon as it passes this signal, this announced speed reduction takes place, even if you can't see it in the signal, and the train has to be down to 90, starting from here. At the next signal, this announced reduction will take place, it is going down to 60, but nothing further on happens for the time being and then at the next signal there is the next reduction announced it is only announced so nothing happens but at the third signal that we have here on our display the reduction commences and the train has to be down at 40 yeah 40 I did it right and after that he might be able to go back to track speed <coughs> How do you... Uh, well, what is the signal in front of this signal here, the, the C signal, if you don't want any reduction here? At this point, only the warning about the 60. So what distance signal would precede a signal of that kind? A green one. Because at this signal here, you still can proceed with line speed. It is only an announcement and the reduction will take place at the second signal after this. This is why at this point we still get a clear signal telling us at the next signal you won't have to slow down. The warning just starts here. So this is why here the speed line starts to drop at this signal for the first time and here we can go through. At least this is how I read the Fahrdienstvorschriften and the signal progression. Some additional signs that we have in our DLC that we are running on at the moment are those. You see this white diamond sitting on signals. This is a sign that is called Voranzeige Einfahrsignal N that tells you that the next signal will be the first signal of a station area. This is the Einfahrsignal, the first signal, the first main signal. Um, or the first signal at the beginning of a station area and then you will have those signals on top of the signal that tell you that here a station area begins <coughs> and there are like abbreviations to tell you what station it actually is and we see that a lot in the DLC here so this would maybe for Rotenburg I don't know if that is the correct abbreviation but the sign looks like this and sits on top of the signal telling you here starts a station area. This is why it is called a station begin board, a Bahnhof Anfang Tafel. If there is a begin board, there needs to be an end board and it looks like this and it tells you here the station area ends. Station end board. It can look like this or it can look like 
this both signs are displayed in the Fahrdienstvorschriften. And why is this important? Because this is the area where shunting can happen. And uh, so especially the end tafel is important because every shunting service must stop here until he gets a permission to get out on the open track. So in case you wonder what those signals mean, they mark the beginning and the end of a station area. That's actually it. The next thing we will look at when we get to it in the game. So I'm returning to the game and this service is finished. We can go mm. to the main mm. menu and start a different service. I want to run a service from Sursi to Lucerno. It is, if I'm not mistaken, the 1018. Yeah, I think it is the 1018. The 1018. Did I put it right on the screen? Yes, 1018. Mm. I have to find it. Mm. Timetable mm. RABE. 1018 here. Yeah. I have no metal mm. because this is a service that to the best of my knowledge cannot be finished at the moment because of a signaling problem. And this is why I picked it out to actually run it. First thing, we open the doors, master key, reverse it to forward, turn on the passenger lights switch on the STM so that we have a safety system then the 211 and enter so that we have the Luzern s bahn sign on our PIS again the codes you can find in the rivet manual for this route and here you can see one of the signals that we discussed just recently a signal that announces us that at the next signal you will have to slow down to 10 uh, to 100 kilometers per hour it is the orange aspect telling us it is an announcement and announcement of a reduction to 100 the integra signum is warning us that we got an announcement And why are we getting this signaling? Because we have to go back to the left side of the track. Here is the signal green over the 10 telling us here starts the reduction to 100 because we are going over a switch. That is the typical reason for speed limits that are signaled. That we are going over a switch. And here should be the switch why we got a, an, a warning from the Integra Sigronum at this point. We will discuss this in the next stream when we are looking at the Integra Signum stuff. shouldn't have gotten it so much as a spoiler but still we got it Oberkirch again if you want to get out of the train you can switch to the bus that is waiting there nice Lee you can actually hear its engine revving if we can get back to it again yeah can you hear it 
It's actually quite sweet, and actually people are getting off the bus. Good point for that. Rivet games. Why so slow approach? Because we have the time and uh, well, as much as I can do it, I try to slow it down nicely for the sake and benefit of the passengers. And if I don't forget to slow down, I try not to use more than 50% on, on the brakes. Or at least no more than 70. Speed limit, the track limit here is 160 since we are through the switch. We obviously are no longer restricted to the 100. But we have to watch out because at after the next station I think we will have to pay attention to the speed signs telling us to slow down. So in the, the brake curve that is in my head, I would try to, uh, I can't obviously because we are running downhill so I need to use more brakes. When I'm at 80 I want to have a distance of 600 meters, when I'm at 60 I want to have a distance of 400 meters. If I am too fast for that I apply more brakes. And I'm at 40, 200, 30, 150, 20, 90. Then I can release the brakes again and let the train roll into position. When it comes to braking, I don't claim to do it in any way that is that is prototypical. Just try to do it in a way that feels more or less nice and sounds nice on the train. And the smoother it is and the less change in brake force that is required, the better it is, I guess. Here again the lake at Nottville. I don't think so, no. The best thing is to know at one point set it to like 50 and then never change it until you get to a nice stop. But perhaps on, on the last few meters release the brakes gradually so I think the most convenient stop you will get if you're almost off your brake until the train gets to a stop by itself and then you can apply the brakes fully again to keep it in place but this would actually be really interesting on a, on a real train to feel it how braking feels and slowing down feels in your stomach. This is obviously something that cannot really be simulated. So we will soon get to the point where we have to slow down to 120, so watch out for the corresponding speed signs on the left of the track. I think it will we will get the warning sign in the bend to the right. 
that is coming up here yeah and here it is 125 incoming so I have to slow down and here is the execution sign for it I guess yeah there it is here the one with the stripes diagonally So now we are down to 125. When I'm traveling with 120, I would start applying brakes at 1.2 kilometers away. So that is quite simple. And then try it with 50. The reduction to 20 does not really hit us. If we are slowing down too fast, we can release the brake a bit. At 80 I want it to be like now at about 600 at 60 I want it to be at 400 meters yeah about that when I am at 40 I want to have like 200 meters left you can see that I will have that and then I can release the brake even more one hundred at forty at thirty yeah that makes sense yeah every train breaks differently so for every train you have to figure out what works and what doesn't and where you have to start applying brakes So typically when I'm running a new train, I will just try to find a spot where I can apply the brakes with 50% and then come more or less to a stop in the spot that we need. And then you can start adjusting it for different gradients and then you start figuring out at what stations you need to modify your pattern because they are sitting in a gradient or have other specifics and then you forget it all again because you don't play that DLC for a couple of months and then you start figuring it out again Here you can see a distance signal showing green and showing orange. Actually having the asterisk denote denoting it as a repeater. So I'm not quite sure if that is a mistake on rivet side. Yes, keep practicing in some overshooted stations, definitely. In my opinion, practice is everything here. Listen to the sound that the train makes. Get a feel for how the distant counter counts down when you're applying brakes and approaching a station. Lose the hut and, and those other indicators. Just look at your distance counter. And listen to your train and uh, hear in what way it is reacting to what you are doing. then you can then you can sometimes really feel the gradient because the train sounds in a different way you can hear the engines work harder than they would usually do at the speed of that kind Yeah, I have no idea if it is actually easier 
don't know if, if you are a trained professional and uh, have experience that I don't have. So I, I wouldn't say it's actually easier because I just don't know. But you feel it, the force of braking and stuff. So you definitely can can feel it if you are applying too much brake effort. Here's our big G's again. <coughs> Before Rotenburg we will get a reduction in speed limit. But this will not bug us because we have to stop at Rotenburg anyway. So 120, that means at 1.2, maybe 60% and then see where we are going. 50 is enough, I guess, because we are still in level ground. Here's the announcement of 110. We can do that on our limiter. Yes, you do. You drive a metro train. That is amazing. At least in my city, metro train drivers have a way of, of stopping their trains that is a bit like slowing it down until they are running like 20 or 15 kilometers per hour and then at the very end of the platform yank in all the brakes that they have and grind to a stop. But I think metro driving is a bit different there because they have to start and stop the train every three minutes or two even. Unteres Futterhaus. That is good. Can never have enough Futterhouses. Dorf. We will get to a reduction to 90. What is the, the opposite of this weird speed changing point at the in the middle of the platform that we talked about earlier? Getting some fog. Again, watch out for the 90 sign here. But we'll have to slow down anyway because we're closing in on the station. I we'll have to use a bit more brakes. them a bit. Here the 90 starts, so in this direction we actually have a valid speed signaling for this speed changing point.
and now you can see that ahead we have a main signal showing a warning aspect, an orange aspect. What is unusual? <coughs> we can still hope that it clears. We can contact the signaler that tells us well proceed as signals indicate. There are not so many IA trains, there are only the trains of the kind that we are driving and most of it are the, the playable services I guess. But yeah, of course, there is not, not, not that much variety. Integra Signum is uh, warning us that we just passed an orange signal. Okay. So we will be slow and make sure that we can stop at the next thread. At the next signal. And then we would think, hmm, hopefully it clears up until we get there. We can't really see it properly because of the fog and what we can see is a signal post but this is not yet the signal this is the signal for the opposite direction mighty fog that we're getting here to test us AJ this reminds me of our spat out in Cajon Pass where we couldn't see the signals anymore because of the fog and then we ran the red signal in front of San Bernardino that was behind the, a curve You remember that, right? I have to admit I was quite miffed. Because I worked like two hours not to have our train speeding and then this happened. So, what is that? Is that our signal? Is that our red signal? It is definitely a signal and it's showing a red aspect. So it did not clear. What we can see quite nicely is that here the station area for Emmen Brücke starts. That is this, this additional sign that we discussed. And now we're sitting here and I think, hey, wait, why is this signal red? Maybe please pass. No, wait for signal to change. Alright. Hmm. This might take a while and uh, I'm afraid this will not clear up. Because why is our signal red here? We can have a look at the other signals. Why is the signal red? Obviously the signal on the other line is red too, but this is no more boxes. Here is a junction obviously. So if our signal is red, obviously, this line must be put active and cleared. Like, not in this direction, obviously, because this signal is red too. But, here you can see, by the way, the station end sign. Here the station area of Emmenbrücke ends. But here this signal is green. The Einfallsignal for Emmenbrücke from this line is green. So we are waiting for a train to come from this direction. The problem is if you go there with your external camera, it ends here. So
So why the signal is green at this point, I do not know. If there are actually AI trains coming out of this diverging line, I have no idea. I've never waited that long to see that happen. Maybe th there will never ever be a train coming from that direction. But it is obvious that this line here takes priority and this is why we got stopped here. And if you read it up in the forums, there are actually people claiming that no train running from Sursee to Luzern can reach its destination because of this bug. What is obviously not true, there are a lot of trains and a lot of services where you don't encounter this problem. But with that one, I think it is a bug. I think I waited like 10 minutes. Maybe the train is supposed to come much later and then it clears up. If so, I have not found it out because I did not have the patience to wait for that to happen. Nevertheless, I thought let's play this service because you can see the progression green to orange to red more or less in a situation where you typically don't get it and you can see why signals can be red for your line of travel because another path has been set by the signaler by the dispatcher this path here from the off into Lucerne well so much for this service here For the finale of this stream, I wanted to run a third service, and this time it is 6.05. It is a service that um, is a regional express service, a faster service that does not stop at every station. It is that here, if I'm not mistaken. At the same time, this here. And it has, because we are going on a different uh, track in Sursi station, a quite weird signaling pattern in the end that I wanted to have a look at and discuss it with you, because I am totally not sure that this is correct. So we will be driving at night this time. Again. Since we are now Regional Express, we can use a different code for our passenger information display. You can see we are now running as Regional Express Basel SBB. We have locked the doors and can start our service. In Luzern and in Sursi, you actually have those clearance for departure uh, signals installed that we know from the Arusa line already. Um, I will showcase them in a different stream, though not on this one today. Because I don't want to be late, this is one of the services where the exit signal is still at red when you are driving out of the station. You can see everything is red and the one in the middle is the one that applies to us. On the left of our screen you could just see a shunting signal that warned us that the next signal will be a stop signal, a red signal. It was in the diagonal fashion. And now it switched to green. You can see because the AI train from the other direction had to clear the switches that we used and now we can actually leave the station. The other thing that you can see is that the DLC is quite dark at night. You can see the signals much better than during day because everything else is so dark. 
and you can't really see the signs here is the 80 sign you can almost see them just bef be be before you pass them and in case you're wondering our lights are on but they do not really light up the surroundings we also have a longer train now we can see it on our train length indicator so we are running a double traction here on the regional express services two trains instead of just one and you can see this dark 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 so if you're running at night I totally recommend use the ETC level 1 with the cap signaling because otherwise you won't see a lot that is happening so you more or less have to drive from your root knowledge alone From the root knowledge we know that we are in a tunnel at the moment, you would not really see that. And how much do we weigh, HJ, <laughs> you forgot to ask, 392 tons because we are double traction now. Here comes the sign that allows 85. No, there is no train length counter. We only have this indicator here on our um, display, but we would have to tell the train how long it is. There is no, there is no train length counter here, no roadrunner system. What, to be fair, does not make a lot of sense on these EMUs, because they more or less are always the same length. And if you put two of them together, then, well, then the length doubles, obviously. But this is something that I would really like to have on, on more locomotives in the game, a road runner system where you push the buttons and then it beeps as soon as the train has traveled its length. To my knowledge it's only on the Baureihe 182, the Taurus as they call them in Austria. The Siemens Eurosprinter, I think the 64U or whatever it is called. That is sold as the Dispolock in the latest livery DLC. Oh, I'm too slow. I slowed down too early. While reminisce, reminisce, reminiscing, reminiscing, whatever it is called about the roadrunner. Actually it's okay, we go we go out later. You have to wait a bit my dog. And still I managed to go above speed limit in the little descent. Yeah, but driving at night here really tests your route knowledge and orientation. Some people say, I don't play this DLC at night because I don't see sh anything. At least here the stations are lit. You have lights on the stations. You will see the later stations won't have lights. They are just no bright beams, definitely. So no bright beams on the tra on the on the train and the normal lights. Ah, 
very very dim only thing that I can do cap lights work though I can switch them off and I don't have any lights at all I can set them to marker lights and with some luck I can go back to my original lights by turning off the marker lights so that has been a point of criticism on the forums for some reason as you can see now we're passing a station, you would hardly know it, but this station still has lighting. This is Emmenbrücke, what is it called, Gerang or so, something like that. Now we're passing the spoke where we could not pass in the service before, where we got the red light from the other direction. Or at least soon. Yeah, this is the red light at the beginning of this diverging track. Now we're going into this 180 degrees curve in front of Rotenburg Dorf. The station with the strange speed changing point to 110 actually see it a bit because we have some light coming from the moon here oh yeah it has but this is this is always train and locomotive specific the lighting so it needs to be fixed for every DLC and every train separately Now we have to guess when our 110 limit will take effect. Maybe now it has taken effect and I can accelerate a bit. We have to stop at Rotenburg. At least we have the moon now, so that we have some light on the track. The untere Futterhaus we can see again, at least the untere Futterhaus is lit. Well, I think to get the lighting right is a difficult thing. There will always be people complaining that it is too bright at night, like in Sandpatch Grade, where you can almost see like during the day at night, and then there are DLCs where it is really pitch black. What is important for me actually is, is that the headlights on the train work properly so that you can switch between high beams and uh, normal reduced headlights as long as obviously the train allows for this opportunity or this, this possibility and um, that the signs should be reflecting so that you can really actually read your signs. this is a bit of a problem here on this DLC because the signs do not really reflect a lot.
Now just imagine you're running this at night with rain and clouds. Maybe the weather still changes <laughs> that we can see that. Speed limit will increase to 120. After the stop here, you don't really see it, but it does, I know that. Well, at least the big cheese is lit. The big cheese is the brightest object that there is in the route. <laughs> yeah. It's always the big Jesus that matter most, wherever you go. I don't know if you can see anything on the stream. On my screen I can actually see properly now with the moon full out. By the way, has yeah, beautiful sunrise starting. That is true. We can see the sunrise starting. And that is actually nice in the game, that the sunrise, that you can, can see it getting brighter and brighter <coughs> almost every second. <coughs> By the way, moonlight. I think that the full moon makes just enough, uh, just the same amount of light <coughs> than uh, a sickle moon in this game. <coughs> I'm sorry. Chili, you have to wait. We're not done yet. But soon. <coughs> ah, that's true. The harder the lighting gets, the more difficult for the game. <coughs> Good thing I put some water on my desk. Yeah, it is actually getting much, much brighter behind us. So, the next stop is already the last stop at Zürsee. We won't stop in Nottville and at Oberkirch. But, as I promised... We will get a weird signaling pattern starting 
Ja, die Exit Signal in Oberkirch. We're still in the 120 limit. But soon we will be allowed to accelerate to 120 and then add to 125 and then to 160 if we don't miss the sign. That is Here is a sign that allows us to go 160. You could hardly see it because it started reflecting just when it was about to pass us. Yeah, it's already almost day behind us. Yeah, you can see. I missed the 125 increase though. So soon we will get the lake on our right and then we will pass Notville station. But it's completely dark, even though there is a train to board. And for the next station, um, I will actually slow down so that we can see the signals better. That they don't just rush past us. So we will be a bit late in Asurxi, but that is okay. I already got my gold medal on this service, AJ, don't worry. So, we got a clear signal here. <laughs> and now see what we are getting here. We're getting an orange signal. That would be something like, wow, we have to yank in our brakes because the next signal is supposed to be red. We just got an orange signal out of the middle of nowhere, but the next signal is not red. The next signal is orange with a six that is weird in itself. That means on the next signal we are slowed down to 60. Okay, so maybe the signal changed on the way from red to 60 announcement. problem was that the yellow signal was so close to the next signal that we would never have made it to a stop from the 160. And uh, if you look close at the signal you will see that the orange signal was actually a signal repeater. It had two stars on it. So it repeated a warning that we did not get before. And obviously, we were not able to slow down in time. Luckily, we got an announcement of 60 and now we are getting a signal that is green and tells us 60 commands is here. Okay. That makes sense because we have to go on the track to the left across a switch. 
where we are limited to 60. So the 60 limit itself totally makes sense. The problem is we got a green signal with a 60 that means the next signal will be clear or will be an announcement of a speed re 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 reduction but it will definitely not be a red signal because if I pass a green signal the next signal cannot be red but if you look to the front the next signal is red obviously because we have to stop here at the station and cannot pass on so I don't know what you think I think this is a confusing signal progression. So, the left one is the one that is valid for us. Exit signal is red. And the last signal that we got was a green one with a 6. Well, the service is done. We can let people out of the train. We can admire the nice sunrise with still the stars in the sky. Lock the doors. And then contact the signaler. Like presentation please what did we get here at the exit of uh, Oberkirch station we got this signal here it was a square uh, frame telling us this is a distance signal we could not really see it but if you go back with the external camera you will see that it has two stars denoting it as a repeater so this is a distance signal repeater here giving us an orange light that tells us definitely the next signal will be red. Since we did not get a warning before that, we have a hard time slowing down to a stop until the next signal. The next signal was not red though, but we got this. We got an announcement of a reduction to 60. A main signal, a circle with an orange lamp and a 6. Then at the entry to Surtsey station we got this a green signal now on a main signal circle with a 6 telling us 60 this was because we were running across the switch so the 60 definitely makes sense what is weird is this signal here with the orange without any number repeater telling us repeated warning next signal will be red and then in the end we got a red signal although w the last signal that we saw was a green one a clear signal with a 6 telling us 60 now as soon as you're across the switch you can go back to line speed and the next signal will definitely be a proceed signal I have doubts that this can be correct what would I have expected actually if the signal at the end of the platform the exit signal is red there must be a warning signal an orange aspect at the signal before maybe with a flashing bar if it is actually a short one or whatever at least we need a orange warning aspect on the second but last signal in front of the red one that is definitely it can't be any other way and then if we want a reduction to 60 start and this signal we have the announcement of 60 at the signal before remember when we had a look at the speed signaling that does not necessarily need to be a green signal with a 6 for the 60 reduction to commence but it is enough that we got the announcement at the next signal you have to be down to 60 and if I have another announcement of a red signal here then uh, we don't see it anymore on this signal that the 60 begins here um, and nevertheless it begins so this signal was probably correct but this signal here I think we should have seen this signal here instead of the green one with the six and the repeater here 
doesn't really make a lot of sense because it repeats a distance signal that we have not seen that most probably was green and if we pass a repeater that shows a warning again the next signal must be red that is why we get an orange warning on the repeater or at least we have to expect it to be red but it wasn't we got that here so maybe we expect this we repeat the warning about the incoming reduction to 60 but this cannot be true because the repeater does not repeat the signal that is about to come but it repeats the signal that was right so and the uh, announcement of the reduction to 60 was not on the signal before it will be on the next one on this signal here the c signal we were still allowed to pass it at line speed we just had to prepare for a reduction to 60 at the next signal so the correct signal on this repeater in my opinion would be a green freifahrt aspect because at the next signal there was still no reduction there was the announcement of a reduction so at here we are at line speed we are still at line speed here we are at 60 and here we are at the stop so from what I can get out of the Fahrdienstvorschriften, this would be the sequence that I expect here. Maybe with a flashing bar because it is a short distance, then we would have a 40 announcement here, not a 60 announcement here. Maybe with a, a V but then we again have a 40 announcement here. So if we ad assume that there is enough distance between the B and the A main signal, the entry and the exit signal for the SUSI platform, then this is the sequence that we should get here, definitely, and not a green signal and then a red in, in, in this succession. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you know more about this and uh, write it in the comments, tell me how what I'm getting wrong, if this is actually the correct sequence, if that what Vivid made is the correct sequence, and uh, yeah, it's an interesting discussion here. You don't get a lot of sources for the progression of uh, system M signals, but I am quite sure that the signal in front of a red signal must be an orange aspect, not a green one. Thank you very much for watching this stream. I'm going back to our beautiful sunset. Chili, just wait a bit longer, okay? We will go out soon, but let me finish this stream in an orderly fashion. Return to free roam. See the external camera. Here's the moon, the stars and the sun is rising. Thank you, AJ, for moderating Thank you, thank you CD Radar for all those interesting remarks. It's super cool that you actually run subway trains. It's, it's rare that I have the opportunity to talk to a, a real dri train driver. Take care and uh, see you next time. Then we will have a look at the Integra Signum system, especially in the Euro Signum variant that runs on Eurobalises and uh, yeah, on ETC STM mode. Thank you very much. See you next time.